Hi guys, I'm Bobsy, and in these videos we are gonna look into making sort of a basic building system. Now let's just look at what we have already on a base level, right? We can take something up and we can put it on a hand and we can equip it. Now with it equipped, we probably want to have some kind of, you know, idea of where we're placing it. So in order to get started with that, we probably want to have that logic on the item itself. So one of the things I think we should start by doing is we can go onto the item, uh, which is our abstract class. And we can probably also add a virtual uh, update when in hand method, if that makes sense. So something like, uh, let's see, where does it make sense to put it? Maybe just under interact, make a public virtual. And oops, and this can be update in hand. Oh, and of course that's a virtual void. And this will essentially just update, well, whenever we hold a certain item in hand. So this we handled from, I think was the local inventory, which we have in the player inventory script here. So here we have the item in hand reference already. And what I think we should do is we should just on update, essentially check if we have an item in hand, in which case we update that. So if we have an item in hand, we'll go item in hand, update in hand, like that. So that means while we're holding it in the hand, we can we'll essentially use that update method. Cool, now with that in mind, let's go and make a new type of item. So I think we can go and we can hit create and we can make like a, call it a buildable item. And this will of course inherit from item, which means we need the can consume item. This will just return false because we cannot consume a buildable. Or actually maybe we should, no, I don't think we should be able to consume it necessarily. It might act a little bit different, but we'll figure that out. First of all, we want to figure out what is it that we spawn. So we can have a private and let's just make this a network identity so we know it will be spawned. And this will be a, I guess, build prefab. And now we can override the update in hand method and essentially handle whatever that we want in here. So first of all, we need to draw some kind of ghost. So let's do a private void draw ghost. And then also, let me just go look at how we set up the tool. So the tool, we do essentially a use, we check whether we can use the item, but where do we use it from? We use it from item in hand, use item. Okay, so we probably, yeah, so we wanna override use item, right? So that's what happens when we click with it. Cool, so let's go back to the buildable. And let's also override use item. So like that. So now we, this is what happens when we click and this is just drawing the ghost and it'll only try and draw the ghost while we have it in hand. So I guess first things first, let's set up some parameters here. So let's set up some kind of serialized field. Let's do a private um, and let's do a float and that'll be build distance. Let's set that to four, for example. Maybe let's set it to five, I don't know, it doesn't matter. Uh, and let's also set a layer, which we can try and build on. Um, private layer mask, build layer. All right, cool. And with this as well, let's also maybe keep track of whether we can build or not. Um, so let's do a, let's do a private, whoops. Let's do a private pool, can build. And then in here, let's just for now return false saying we can't build. And then for here, when we use the item, it'll essentially check if we cannot build, then we return. All right, so now we have sort of a good base setup. Let's get into what I mentioned with the drawings. Let's do an if, it's not physics.raycast, uh, then we return just if it doesn't hit anything. And this will of course be from the camera position again. So as we've done before, let's do private camera, camera like so. And then let's maybe just in a wake set camera equals to camera dot main. Right, and let's just here do camera dot transform dot position, whoops. And then camera dot transform dot forward will out the actual hit. We'll use the build distance and we'll use the build layer. Cool, so now we have our raycast and we know essentially what we've hit. So this means that we've hit something. Now this doesn't inherently mean that we can build, but let's do a local, I guess we're constantly drawing the ghost, right? So maybe we should have some kind of state as to how far we are in the ghost drawing state. So we can also use that maybe if we can not build. And um, there's a lot of ways to go about this essentially. I guess we can also just have a ball that's handled by the draw ghost. That might not actually be a bad idea. Let's just do private bool underscore can build. And then this can build is just used in here. So if we cannot build, and then here in the beginning of draw ghost, we say equals to false, we cannot build. And essentially when we get to the very end, we just say can build true. So all our logic has to be in between here. So first of all, right now we cannot build if we don't hit something and we can't build if we do hit something, that might be a good start. And we can actually start by maybe just doing that. And then here, when we try and use the item, we'll then actually build it. We'll do the build position here. Um, this should, however, let's actually just store that. That's probably easier. Right, vector three, let's do build position. 
And then this build position can always just by the end as well be set equal to the hit dot point. That'll be the build position. And then this is already done. And now we can essentially just instantiate the buildable with the build prefab at the build position. And then right now we can just do it with any rotation. We could figure out something with rotation later. Um, but this should actually allow us to build stuff uh, infinitely pretty much. So let's try and go and make that buildable. Um, so let me just go and let's copy the apple for example. And this will just be a buildable. Uh, let me just make its body bigger in general. Something like this. Uh, I'll of course make it not a prefab of the apple. Let's remove the food and let's add the buildable. As you can see, so this is the item name. This is just test buildable. Item sprite can be whatever we want. I'm just going to make this black UI sprite. I have the rigid body. And then we need to build prefab and we need the layer. Let's just set the layer to default for now. Um, and yeah, so let's try this. So let's make something to actually build. So let me just uh, create a 3D cube. Um, actually, let's start by creating an empty. So this is a test buildable. Buildable object. And let's make, give it a sphere, I guess. And let's also give it a cube. Just something like this. We'll put the sphere on top of the... No, sorry. We'll put the sphere on top of the cube. Uh, and the... I guess let's just move all of them um, a bit up as well, just to offset it, something like that. Yeah, so now you can see this is near the bottom, something like that. All right, so now we have the test buildable and we can just give it like an, 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 a network identity, which is essentially just an, an empty network identity. Um, I'm going into prefabs and let's just do items, I guess. Well, it's not really an item, I guess the buildable is an item. Um, but the test buildable, I guess let's make a new folder for it, buildables. We put that in there. And then on the buildable here, we drag that in there and we save the prefab. Now let's also remember, as far as I remember, I think on the inventory we needed to, oh yeah, we have all items scriptable. And adding to that, uh, we of course have to add the buildable prefab. So that's that one, cool. So with that now, we should be able to test build something with this. So I guess let's try and start up first. Let me pick up that buildable let me equip it and now when we go around and we click as you can see now we build stuff now we're building these little cubes and we can build them all over the place oops i built myself inside here maybe i can push myself out i can there we go i'm out <laughs> as you can see now we can build this is obviously a simple building system and you can see now i click on the air nothing happens and when i click on like the edge of the tree which doesn't have a collider nothing happens in the tree we can't hit because that's the resource layer but when we hit the ground we can successfully build cool so that's a good start um, now, something we can do is we can also sort of check a collision. We, we could check a collision somehow to figure out if, you know, are we building inside something valid or not. And for that sake, we can also show a ghost. Uh, essentially, sort of a ghost representation of, uh, of where are we building. And so I think, let's put the build position right after we essentially hit something. Because then we actually have the position. And let's try and draw some kind of like quick, uh, I guess, lazy ghost drawing here. Um... So I think first of all, let's go in here and let's make a script for the buildables as well that we are putting down. So let's make a new script and let's make a new script and we call that a building. That's something that can be built, I guess. Um, and let's find that this is just mono behavior. Now, first thing that I want is I want a full list of all the renderers. So let's get a list of renderers and this will just be all renderers equal to new. And what I also want is I want a material, private material, which is the can build and cannot build materials. Uh, I guess let's call them mat afterwards just to make it nice and clear. And let's just do a public void set can build, pool can build. And now we'll essentially change the material. So we'll for each through all of the renderers, whoops, all of the renderers. And this is a renderer. And let me try and think. Uh, so yeah, we want to take the renderer and we want to do shared material is equal to whether we can build or not. So if we can build, we use the can build material. If we cannot build, we use the cannot build material. Right, so this should be able to set the can build. Now we can go back into the buildable here and instead of a network identity up here, um, and actually let's make this one a network identity just for good measure or a network behavior, same thing. Um, but instead of that in the buildable, let's now make it, this into a building. So that way we can reference it directly. And this now also means that we can use this to possibly spawn a ghost, right? So one thing is when we actually spawn it properly, 
we just want to have it actually be proper like this. Um, oh, I guess when it's a network identity, this might be a bit more tricky. Oh, you know what? This is fine. This is kind of fun. Let's try and make this an observers RPC so everybody can see it. And then let's also have this one require component type of network transform. Now, the reason why I do this is so people can actually see live that we're building. I think that's a bit more interactive, a bit more fun. And it also solves our problem here. Um, and then let's also do an observers RPC and let's do a public void and let's have that do finalize building like that. And then that should set them back to the original materials, which I think we should store. So we'll do a private list material and we'll do underscore original materials. And that's a new list. And in awake, we'll of course store those. So we'll do for each all renderer. I'll essentially do original material dot add renderer dot shad material like that. So now we are essentially storing the reference to the original material. And then down here, we can go through all of the renderers again, but this time applying the material from let's let me for each through it instead. I just used all the intro to make it into for each loop. And I want to set this back to the original materials at position I as well, because they should now share positions. You can add some safety to this, you know, make sure that this exists or whatnot. But I mean, in my case, it always really should. Um, so I'm going to be, well, I mean, I guess I can show you the easy way would just be to say if original materials that count less than or equal to I, we just continue. That's sort of the, the safe way. Or essentially, in this case, I guess we're counting up so we can just return. Completely break the loop. Uh, okay, either way. How we're going to do it now is we're actually not going to instantiate it. What we're going to do is we're going to have the building as the instance here. So whenever that we we start being able to draw ghosts, I guess what we'll do is we'll do if there is no current building, we'll do underscore current building equals to instantiate. And then, well, I guess we have the whole instantiate method here, right? Yeah, we do. So. Then we just instantiate it at the build position. Let's make sure the build position comes first. And yes, now we're essentially instantiating it. And what we'll constantly do is we'll have the transform dot position of it be equal to the build position that we have. And we will also have the current building dot set can build here. I guess let's do it up here at the top. So if the building exists, current building, we can set the can build to false. No, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm confusing things now. Down here, we'll set the can build to true. Because that's what we're doing here. Um, and then essentially everywhere we return, we set the can build to false. So I think we should do that instead. So we do that here. And we do that here. And actually, we can make this even cleaner. I'm just going to show you a little triggery we can do here. What we can do is we can have a private bool. Uh, I guess we could technically make it a public as well. Public bool can build, then we can always see it from the outside. But more importantly, we can actually change how this works. So we can make a getter and a setter. So if we do a get, we just get the underscore can build. That's what we will return. So we'll just return can build. And then with the setter, we'll uh, essentially set the can build can build equals to value. So this is how it would normally work. But what we can now also do is we can remove all of this uh, set can build logic from here and we can also remove it. Oops, I think I'll remove it from somewhere else. Yes, yeah, so now we have it nowhere else. And what we can just do up here is we can do if the underscore current building exists, then we set the can build equals to the new value of can build that we want to set. So essentially every time we now change this can build through this capitalized can build. So of course we have to do that everywhere. Uh, and we can also just get it. So we can pretty much always just use the capitalized one and make sure that the non-capitalized one is only ever used in one place. So you can see this. Yeah, so this is true. This is fine. This one just returns it whether we can build and this one sets it. So it's only ever used inside here. And then we use this anywhere outside. Because um, this essentially means now we'll just inherently change the building color regardless every time we set it. So that's good. And now the position is also being set. Um, and yeah, I think that should uh, do the first little bit. So let's maybe try that. I'm not entirely sure how this is going to look, but let's give it a shot. So, oh, whoops. I need to set the buildable, of course, because that's no longer valid. So we'll go back to prefabs, buildables, and we just drag the building in. Oh, I guess this doesn't have the building on it. This will be a building. We'll remove that network identity right there. 
And then we need to, of course, make the materials as well. So let's go into materials. And let's just, uh, I guess we can just duplicate the apple. And this is can build. And this is can not build. Like that. So I guess the cannot build can be red. We can make it transparent and then make it slightly see-through or something. Like this, so it's more of a, a ghosting effect. Same with the can build. We can make it transparent. Can make it slightly see-through, but maybe make it a bluish color to display that, you know, this is a good thing. Or we can make it green or whatever. That's up to you. Uh, either way, let's drag and drop the building in here now. And now let's also on the building set those materials. So cannot build and can build. And of course, we need to also set all the renderers. So let's just quickly save this. Let's make sure to override it. And then let's make sure to drag and drop the renderers in here. Render right there, render right there. And there we go. Now let's try it. So if we pick up the can build here and we equip it. Oh, and as you can see, of course, it's on its own layer. That's the issue here. So let's make a... Uh, um, actually, I think maybe we should set the layer. That's probably a better idea. So let's go into the building. Let's set the layer. Uh, so let's just do a private constant int ignore raycast layer. Yeah, I think that's fine. And let's just also store the original layer. So let's do that. So let's do underscore original layer equals to game object dot layer. And then the game object layer we set to the ignore raycast layer. Or even more so, we probably want to set the layer recursive, as I think we've done before. So let's do game object objects obj and then int layer and then we'll essentially just for each through every one of the objects children so that's for each loop of type transform and there's a child and then we'll just do uh i guess we can just do object dot layer equals to layer and then we'll go through set layer recursive here with the child of game objects and the layer that we need to set so there it goes. Now we can set the layer recursively here to the game object and to the ignore raycast layer. Like so. And then once it is built, when it finalizes, then we can set the layer back to the original layer. I think that should be fine. So this should be the original layer. Like so. I think that should work fine. Let's also just go and confirm that the ignore raycast layer is indeed layer 2. So yeah, ignore raycast layer number 2. So let's go and try this now. Now let me try and pick it up, drag and drop it down, and there we go. Now you can see it's blue because it can build, and when it cannot build, it turns red. Blue, red, blue, red. So now you can see I can, and but now obviously we can't click to build right now, um, because right now we don't spawn it anymore. We don't do anything. So this is an easy little fix that we can do. Um, so essentially, we now want the current building to sort of be freed, if that makes sense. So we want the, uh, essentially want the current building dot build. Uh, that finalized building, yeah, and then we want to set the current building equals to not like so. Um, so this way, yeah, it should pretty much be finished, set back to its original state, and it should also be freed, so we no longer drag it around. Uh, and I guess we should also test to see if this actually works multiplayer. This is my first time trying to make a setup exactly like this. We can see now we drag it around, and when I click, it places it down, and now it's valid, and now we're ready to place the next one. Click, and there we go. Now that's three in a row here. Uh, oh yeah, you can see the ghost doesn't disappear when we unequip, but we can solve that in probably the next video. Now let me just have the other player here uh, works. You can see here, this is now when I drag around and I try and, and build on the host. And as you can see here, when we uh, have the client over here, I guess let me move the host over to the other screen. You can see that when we move it around, that works perfectly fine. When we place it, that also works very well. So cool, this seems to work really well. And this is a good start. Oh, yeah, and of course, we can push each other with it. That's pretty fun. I'm going to keep that. I like that. Um, and yeah, in the future video, of course, there's stuff to still fix and a lot of stuff to still do. Um, so I think that, but I think this is a good place to end off here. And then the next video, we'll, of course, finalize and make it a bit nicer, make actually some collision checking to the placing uh, and make sure we don't have little issues here and there. And then there'll, still, there'll likely still be stuff. But, uh, but yeah, hopefully this was helpful to you. Hopefully you like this idea of trying to set up something to build. And uh, yeah, I hope that you are living the dream. And I'll see you in the next one.